Cowboys are kind of like the, 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 the symbolic, when you think of the West, very often they are the group of people. Maybe when you were little you pretended to be a cowboy dressed up. As I showed you in the previous slide that, you know, celebrities, you know, in fashion and cowboy culture, but the cowboys actually had a real job, and their real job was to take these cattle and send them up north to places that would... The cowboys. Kill the cow and send it to the meatpacking plant. So you have these markets, these cities, they're farming, right? The cowboy, everything from the hat with the keeping the sun out of their face and their neck, to the chaps and the, the, the spurs. Cowboys came in all sorts of different ages, ethnicities, races, so on and so forth. And uh, their goal, their, their job was to get these uh, cattle to market. The railroad plays an important role there. Talked about Dodge City, Abilene, Kansas, so on. Talked about if any of you are vegetarians. I don't know if we had any vegetarians in the room, but, you know, different places, they eat different things. Cows, mmm, yum. Maybe you don't like them, maybe you do. So we had all that, right? Um, showed you some guinea pig photos. Yeah. Some of you got a little squeamish. Oh no, the part that are just a guinea pigs. Mmm, yummy. Eat them. Dark meat turkey. Okay. And the great thing about guinea pigs, if you're ever poor, if you're ever poor, guinea pigs do something that is really, really good. If you're poor, anybody know what they do? Make you rich. <laughs> they have lots of babies. They, they, like, literally, when I was little, I had a boy guinea pig and a girl guinea pig. We didn't know. We thought they were two dudes, and we just thought that they were, like, progressive or, you know, really liberal, and they were always doing things to each other. And we were like, cool, hey, you know, we're an open-minded house. Uh, the next thing you know, the, 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 the boy guinea pig had uh, 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 babies. And then we were like, oh, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not a boy. Uh, so we separated them, and uh, she damn near had babies again. I was like, what the hell? He has super sperm or something. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, so guinea pigs have lots of babies. So if you're poor, you have lots of food, right? You just kind of keep making them, right? So you have the guinea pig. You talk about uh, the pigeons. Beloved duck fetus. We're going to have that at our potluck. We'll plan that for Friday. And, of course, Pumbaa. Talked about that. And mm, <coughs> dog. And uh, so on and so forth. So here's the deal. Another thing you need to know is when you think about cowboys, typically you think about, you know, maybe a certain type of image, but what you need to realize is one-fifth of all, all one-fifth of all cowboys. One-fifth of all of the cowboys were either African-American or Mexican-American. Uh, th this plays an important role. There's a certain uh, appeal. If you're African-American or Mexican-American, um, the appeal, of course, is that there's a freedom on the trails. When you're herding cattle, typically the cattle are not going to be racist towards you. They don't really care if you're black, white, or whatever. So for some African-American people, they left the south or the north or the cities they were at, and went west. So there was a freedom on the trails. Another thing about cowboys that you should be aware of, it was a real job. It's an, a whole economy surrounding the cattle industry, but the story or the myth of the cowboy gets perpetuated in things such as dime novels. Those were very popular in the late uh, 19th century, early 20th century, where people, it's basically like comics or short stories where you could read about the cowboy, and he was always brave, he always did the right thing, he was kind of a loner, but it was like this romanticized version of what it was like to be a cowboy. So the reality of being a cowboy versus the myth or the romantic version. Same thing on TV today, right? You see cop shows, CSI shows, and you think that that's how your life is. It's very exaggerated, very romanticized. Interestingly enough, there was a battle on the frontier between these two interest groups. On the one side, you have the farmers. You remember the farmers, all those people who were going west, forming their homesteads, buying up that land, you know, having to settle on it for five years and get 160 acres of land. And those farmers were putting up that new 
invention, barbed wire. And if you think about it, that makes sense. If you're a farmer, you're going to put up barbed wire to keep things out of your crops. Keep things from eating your crops. From stampeding your crops. And the people who don't like the barbed wire are going to be the cattle ranchers. Because the cattle ranchers want the cows to be able to move freely so they can eat the free grass, which is along the trails. So the cattle ranchers actually start doing stuff to the barbed wire, like cutting it, removing it. And you have something that is called the range wars. And the question is, who let the cows out? Moo, moo, moo. Who let them cows out? Boo, 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 boo. Who let them cows out? Boo, 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 boo. Who let them cows out? Boo, 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 boo. Who let them cows out? And you actually have range wars erupting where people, farmers and cattle ranchers, are battling each other on the frontier. And there are battles, not just on the frontier, but also in the state legislator, where people, farmers and cattle ranchers, are trying to get laws passed which would benefit their side over the other. So you have the range wars that are taking place as a result of the economy of the West. And of course, you have the West, just like we saw in the South or in other parts of the country, developing into major business. Farming becomes big business. And the last kind of big rush takes place in Oklahoma. Anybody remember who's in Oklahoma? Native, Native Americans. What Native Americans? Uh, Cherokee. Cherokee. The five civilized tribes, the so-called five civilized tribes, remember? You have the Seminoles, the Creek, the Choctaws, the Chickasaws, the Cherokee. And remember what happened. Because of the Indian Removal Act, they were removed. Some of them, quote, voluntarily. Some of them because of something called the Trail of Tears. Some of them because of war, such as the Seminole Indians. And they had been in this area ever since the 1830s and 1840s. It was basically Indian territory. Now, here's the wild thing about it. What happens is these Native Americans had been there for quite a while, and something happens. For a very long time, many speculators, people who want to make money off land, they're looking at this territory and they're going, if we only could get access to it, there's a problem. You put the Native people there. Can't take it now, right? That would just be like really, really, really messed up. So you need an excuse to justify taking land that you have given them a couple decades ago. Anybody think of a good excuse? You need a really good excuse because now we're in 1889. It's 1889 and there's a lot of people who would love to have this land. But the native people are there. Anything we could think of. How could we justify taking the land from the native people that we had given them after the first time we took their land. You can make it a state, but that doesn't still, I mean, I mean, wouldn't they still have claims to that land? There's got to be something. What can we do? Terrorists. Huh? They can look like terrorists seeking to undermine the union. Ooh, I like it. I like it. I, I need people like you around me, always thinking of sinister things to screw people over. It's a beautiful <laughs> thing, right? Maybe they can be terrorists. Huh? Kind of, actually. I wonder if you've heard of something. Let me tell you about a little event. Um, you may want to write this down. <sighs> there was a thing called the Civil War. <laughs> Mind-blowing, I know. Holy crap. Mr. Jones is so smart. So there was this event called the Civil War. And during the Civil War, there were two sides fighting. One was the Union, the other was the Confederacy. Hopefully I haven't lost you. And during the Civil War, some of the Native Americans who were living in Oklahoma Territory sided with the Confederacy. Dun, dun, dun. And so now in 1889, 
The federal government's looking at that land and they want to open it up to settlement. Bingo, we have an excuse. Oh yeah, you sided with the Confederacy. And so therefore, what we're going to do is we are going to open up your land to further settlement. We're going to confiscate some of your land, kind of as punishment for your betrayal. And we're going to open up to settlers. And we're going to open it up in 1889 to people to come in and take land. Now this was nothing more than a pure land grab. This was purely a, an excuse, a justification for what would be. And keep in mind, there are native people here, right? You have the different kind of plots of land already put in place. And what they do is in 1889, Congress authorizes the opening of huge tracts of land in Indian territory. And you have this mad dash. We have tons of people going to Oklahoma and they basically start claiming land. We have approximately 2 million acres of land opened up to settlement. These two images show people on the top waiting for the land to be opened up because literally they would basically shoot a gun up in the air and then people would rush into the land. You would stake your claim and that is your land. On the bottom there is the beginning of the Oklahoma land rush. Now, fun fact, trivia for Tuesday, December 17th, 2013. What is the nickname of the state of Oklahoma? Anybody know? The Sooner State. Anyone know why I got that name? Exactly. People were so excited about this land that people rushed in sooner than they were supposed to and stake their clam, claim to the land, clams, stake their claim to the land illegally, and it gets the nickname the Sooner State. Now, um, for the native people, this is obviously another example of getting screwed over. Um, there's a great quote. Um, a disheartened Native American complained to one of the commissioners uh, that, hey, tell your people, so the Americans, that since the great father, we're talking the president, promised that we should never be removed, we have been moved five times. So you put us here and you keep moving us. I think you had better put the Indians on wheels and you can run them about wherever you want. Whole point was this was one betrayal after another betrayal. Now I know what you're thinking. You guys are thinking of college. You're like, oh my god, where am I gonna go? I have to do college applications in less than a year. So allow me to introduce you to Oklahoma State. You all could be future Sooners. You can have the proud OU on your sweater. You could root for the Sooner football team on game day Saturdays. You could even, boys and girls, get the bed sheets for the Oklahoma Sooners. Think about it. I have a friend. Well, at the time, he wasn't a friend. I met this guy. Here's my one I think funny, Oklahoma story. So I met this teacher. We were both teaching in another country. I'll leave the country's name out of it, just in case for some random reason, he finds my YouTube video and then gets mad that I'm telling this story. This individual was a person who uh, was or is gay problem, right? All good. He had the most awesome shirt on earth from Oklahoma. His shirt did not say Oklahoma. It said Oklahoma. <laughs> Living out proud. And he got it 
during a gay pride festival in Oklahoma. <coughs> Clever play on words there. So, those are my two Oklahoma things I know. <laughs> Oklahoma and the Sooner State. Last thing is this kid. I was watching some college football a couple of years ago, and Oklahoma actually had a pretty good football team at the time. They were ranked number 14 in the nation, which is pretty good. Uh, and they were playing Texas, who was ranked number 7. And Oklahoma was losing, as you could see, and the game was winding down. And they were showing uh, footage of people in the stands who were devastated. And this kid was shown. And he's crying on national TV. Look, they're, they're rushing for land in Oklahoma in the back. <laughs> they got it. And I love this because the kid is crying on national TV because his football team lost. And he has a man's ass in his face. <laughs> and a man's <laughs> front end of the ass. Junk, as some people call it, in his face. And he's on national TV crying. I'm sure his father was proud. So, a couple more things and we're going to be done. In 1890, something significant happened. And what happened in 1890 is the end. This is the end, my only friend, the end of our elaborate plans, the end of everything that stands, the end. The end of the frontier. And you don't ordinarily need to know historians' names, but you do need to know the name of Frederick Jackson Turner. A historian, I think it was actually in 1893, he writes an article called The Significance of the Frontier in American History. The Significance of the Frontier in American History. And Frederick Jackson Turner writes this article and he says the frontier is closed. The frontier is closed. And remember, in 1890, the Indian Wars end after the Battle of Wounded Knee. So he says the frontier is closed. We have settled the continent. And remember, that doesn't mean that every part of the continent is settled, but we have conquered the continent. So he's obviously looking at it from an Anglo-American perspective, a white perspective with regard to, you know, there's not a concern that the natives were already there. There's not a respect for Native American culture. So it's a very, you know, ethnocentric view. The white man has conquered. The confuser, like going from room to room. And what he is saying is the frontier has been conquered. Now, there's actually two things that I want to point out about this. The first one is... This guy has nothing to do with Frederick Jackson Turner, but he, at the same time, and actually a little bit before Tur Turner's talking about the frontier, he was one of these individuals, a really kind of an inspirational guy, John Muir. You can actually go up to Northern California, there's a whole wilderness named after him. Because he is going to create a group called the Sierra Club, and he's basically going to say, hey you guys, America, we are destroying our natural resources. Our land is not limitless. It is not inexhaustible. We have to actually protect it, preserve it. And John Muir, the Sierra Club, is going to be one of the first ever organizations to advocate on behalf of the environment. Um, and if you actually look at a map of the national parks that are created, the first one ever is Yellowstone in 1872. You also get Yosemite, Sequoia. And what's important is, notice, most of them are in the West. Because the West was still not completely developed. And so you get people talking about, we need to preserve what we have left. We've already kind of gone from coast to coast, but we got to protect the, the environment. And another thing about the frontier, and this is the important part, back to Frederick Jackson Turner, there was this idea, an important idea that the frontier, the frontier is that area out in the West, 
It was more than just a place. Now, this is going to sound like some hippie, like, stuff right here. Like, this idea that it was a state of mind, man. It was like a, a, a way of thinking. It was about, like, yo, opportunity, bro. It's like, you know, when, 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 like, stuff got bad, bro, you could go west. It was like our, our fallback option, man. Like, you know, if, if I couldn't make it in the East, I could go West. It was like, you know, it was like, it was like a unicorn and a rainbow and a hummingbird had a baby. It was beautiful, man. It's like the greatest thing on earth. It's like chocolate bacon. And now it's gone. Freaking over. And there was this kind of psychological, you know, moment where America realizes that if we want to expand, we have to go overseas. And you're going to learn that in another chapter. And, and, and the frontier has closed. And so, therefore, we had to think about our nation differently than we did previously. And to give you an idea of how, how big of a deal this is for some people... Um, there were people back in the 1820s who, when they were looking at the map of North America, they were saying, it's going to take 500 years for us to occupy the entire continent. That was the Secretary of War. Yeah, Secretary of War. 500 years. And next thing you know, about 60 years later, they conquered. Now, once again, this is leaving out the contributions of Native American people. This is a very ethnocentric view. But Jackson was revealing that the West has closed, the frontier has closed. And one last thing, and then we're going to be done. There is this very romanticized view of the West. If you ever go down to that Autry History Museum over there in Griffith Park, you may have gone when you were a little kid, but if you go there as someone who's read the chapter, read chapter 27 and actually studied history, you'll notice that there is a difference between the myth of the West the idea of cowboys and everything's wonderful and it's a great job and, you know, all the freedom. The reality is if you're a cowboy, it was dirty, it was lonely, it was boring. Or the story of the gold miners, right? You go over there with your little little, little pan and then you get rich and then, you know, you, you, you have a wonderful life. The reality is you showed up and you probably were poor and you, maybe you got shot because it was very violent in those mining towns. So there was a romantic view, right? All these brave men and stuff versus reality. And part of the myth comes from what back then was the equivalent of today's TV or radio, the Wild West shows, the dime novels, the stories that people told, the heroic story of cowboys versus Indians, this idea of the making of the West, this contribution of this idea.